Hi there and welcome to another interview. Today I've got the fabulous Emma with me and it's going to be a little bit of a different conversation because normally I have people that have lost £220 or £190 or something like that or they've reversed MS and they're all very dramatic and wonderful stories but I get loads of people talking about that last £5 that they want to lose and Emma is one of those people that came to me with that and a few other things. So I'm going to ask her about that. But the first thing I'm going to ask her is what I do to every single guest. I'm going to ask, hey, Emma, why did you become carnivore? Hi, Stephen. Um, well, it's uh, it's been a long journey, which I won't bore you with the details. But um, I was keto for uh, about four years from about 2016. Um, I did that as a gradual thing because I realized that sugar was interfering with my ability to make good decisions. Let's just say that. So I started with dropping sort of the overt sugar, you know, pastries and cakes and ice cream. And then gradually that led to me dropping bread and pasta and rice. And then uh, eventually I became keto in about 2016 and absolutely loved it and did really well. Um, I lost all the weight I needed to lose, really. I was healthy. I felt fit, fit and healthy. I still had a couple of issues, which I'd had since I was 17, which was acne and constipation. But aside from that, I felt well on keto and was doing really well. And then uh, 2020 and what happened in 2020 happened, uh, and I went a bit off the rails, let's say. Um, I was... Um, eating sort of a standard British diet of cereal, toast, jacket potatoes. Um, everyone was buying tins of chickpeas to make cheap curries, weren't they? And I was doing that and making banana bread and doing all the things. Uh, so I went completely off keto and was eating what most people, I suppose, would consider a, a normal diet. Uh I gained weight, but I didn't really care because no one was seeing me anyway. We were all locked in the house. And um, and that was that. That continued really through 2020. And then I the, the world opened up again and I realized I needed to get this back under control. And um, I went back to doing, a, I suppose what you'd say, a food pyramid, a healthy, balanced diet. So I didn't go back to keto at that point. Uh, went back to eating um, what I thought was a fairly healthy but normal diet, if you like. Um, but I continued to gain weight. <clears throat> and that was frustrating um, because I knew that I'd actually, like calories, I'd dropped my calories quite significantly, but I was continuing to gain weight didn't really make sense to me but you know anyway and then in summer of 2020 uh 2021 sorry i had something happened i felt really unwell um i was struggling to get out of bed in the morning i was getting out of bed because i was hiding it from everyone so i, I was getting up six o'clock in the morning seeing the kids off to work and school seeing my husband off to work and then just going back to bed, uh, sometimes for two hours um, before I could even start work. And I'm self-employed. Um, so it was really affecting my income um, and affecting my work, my ability to work how I wanted to work. It was affecting my family life. It was affecting uh, my social life. I didn't want to go out, do anything. The fatigue was really disabling and uh, not like just being tired. It was um, just needing to sleep and then sleeping but not feeling good after a sleep either uh, and the weight was continuing to go up and up sometimes even two pound a week even though i was eating quite low calories really um so i did went back to my old fail safe which was keto um and i felt a little bit better not greatly but um, a little bit and um, the weight loss sort of stabilized a bit but not not greatly again uh, and then that continued and I was gradually just 
dropping things. Um, I was uh, getting rid of the processed keto stuff, the bars and the shakes and things that I was making, the almond flour cakes and biscuits and things. Got rid of those gradually and then I was got to a point in January 2022 when I was really just eating uh, meat, fish, eggs, dairy, fruit and some veggies like mushrooms. So quite a, quite limited, I felt. Um, not as not as limited as it, it kind of became, but um, and I just didn't improve as much as I'd hoped to improve. I had blood tests during this time because I went to the doctor with this fatigue, and uh, they checked me for lots of things: thyroid um, issues, menopause, um, low iron, all sorts, um, and they all came back fairly normal. Um, and a GP said to me, this was towards the end of 2021, she said to me, Emma, we really need to think about lifestyle now because your tests are showing that everything's okay. It, it's maybe lifestyle. So um, I, as I say, began dropping things. I dropped alcohol. Um, I uh, dropped the processed stuff. Um, but still, I was still feeling grotty, really. Um, and then the day after my 44th birthday, which was uh, January the 28th, 2022, 44th birthday, did I say, um, I decided that um, I was going to be carnivore. I'd seen, uh, it was Michaela Peterson's uh, story that really got me thinking. Obviously, she's had some real significant health problems, which I didn't really have, but um, I suppose fatigue, it's not a diagnosis as such, but it was a symptom and it was really affecting my life. So I thought, right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a month and see what happens. Um, and then I did. And um, I started to feel better quickly uh, within, uh, I'd say, a week. Um, I started to notice that things were just lifting. It was like a cloud being lifted off me really quickly. Um, and the weight started to, first of all, stop going up, and then it gradually started to come down and down. Um, and I just really enjoyed it. I actually enjoy the simplicity of it um, because it's such a small list of things to eat and if it's not on the list, it doesn't go in my mouth, <laughs> that kind of thing. It felt just a really simple way to live. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. And well, things that happened. So the fatigue, well, it just improved gradually. Um, other things, constipation became a non-issue. That's something I'd had since I was 17 years old. Um, so if I tell you that uh, from between 17 and 44, I didn't have a natural bowel movement. I only went to the toilet if I had a laxative. Um, so I'd tried countless times to go without because I thought, you know, I really do need to get into some kind of routine with my, um, with my bowel. So um, I tried to not have any laxatives, um, but it had got to day seven, eight, even day nine and still nothing apart from a big swollen stomach and lots of pain and I ended up having to have laxatives again. So um, that had been an issue since I was 17 and I'd, um, I believe it was an antibiotic um, potentially caused by antibiotics. I don't know that for a fact, but it corresponds with about the time when I developed quite severe acne when I was 17 and went on antibiotics for about two years different different ones um and i was really constipated from then on so um yeah the constipation was resolved still is uh acne got loads better um mm -hmm. really it wasn't really a it hasn't been a problem ever since that was something i'd also had since i was 17 never really got on top of it um but i am now um 
Brilliant. Yeah. Now that's good. So we got uh, a, a lot of detail there, Emma. Well done. Um, you said you lost a lot of weight in 2016, and people will not let me off the hook if I don't ask. What do you mean by a lot of weight? When- okay. Yeah. So I'm not talking a hundred pounds like some of your clients. It's um, but it was um, for me. It was a lot because I'd always stuck around ten stone. Um, and I was 12 and a half stone um, and I got down to nine and a half stone. Um, so I lost three stone, Excellent. whatever that is in, whatever that is in other. That's, <laughs> three, that, sure. that's about 42 pounds. Yeah. So uh, for the, for the Americans and people that are in metric, a stone is 14 pounds, one stone. See, in, in the UK, we stick to our phrases and stuff. Um, right. Now you went uh, carnivore. And it was inspired by Michaela Peterson, which is yeah. one thing I hear ever such a lot, yeah. um, which because she's great. Uh, but it didn't go completely fantastically for you because I think something happened in year two. You you allowed some food to creep, creep back oh, in. Yeah. I mean, so it all started off. And I was really trying to just keep it as simple as possible. So it was um, I'd have two meals a day. One would be pork, usually pork belly with salt and then one would be beef usually uh, a steak of some kind um i can't unfortunately afford ribeyes and fillet steak all the time so i was eating this uh sort of thin uh sizzle steaks that you call them from aldi um which are a bit bit tough but they're quite cheap and they're tasty and so i was having one pork meal one beef meal mostly just with salt and then some butter uh, and I did really well on that. Um, I never got rid of coffee and I didn't get rid of um, alcohol completely. Um, I say I I did say I had stopped alcohol, but I didn't completely. Um, I was still having a um, the odd uh, vodka and Diet Coke uh, at weekends. Um, but I'd done really well like that. And I think probably after that first year, I'd got down to the weight I wanted to be. Everything was resolved in my eyes. Um, I didn't feel fatigued and I felt really good. And I think that sort of allowed, I felt like I wanted to loosen the reins slightly. And I ended up discovering um, Frank's hot sauce, (laughs) which is delicious. Um, And what I found was, because sometimes it's hard to um, get down, I, I like to aim for a certain, you know, 100 to 120 grams of protein a day. I'm not, you know, I don't track that as such, but I do it sort of by eye. And some days I just wasn't feeling that hungry. So if I put hot sauce on my pork belly, I can eat twice the amount. Um, and then gradually, um, for financial reasons and just for a bit of variety i i was having minced beef instead of steak now minced beef is something that i don't really like so i was just doing it for financial reasons i suppose um but the only way i can get down minced beef is by making it into like taco mince so i was making seasoning at home taco seasoning and adding that and then i'd add some cheddar cheese to make that taste even nicer sometimes even a bit of ketchup um, so I was having my pork belly with hot sauce and then I was having my taco mince in the evening with my cheese, sometimes even a blob of um, sour cream. Um, and that was leading to, I felt, me being a little less in control of my cravings. Um, I was having quite a lot of cream in coffees and things as well, rather than just drinking them black. I've always just had black coffee all my life, but I was putting double cream in them instead. And um, that just led me down, I think, a bit of a slippery slope. Um, I was having, um, some people might call them cheat days. I don't really like that because it's, uh, you know, I don't feel the need to cheat. You know, you're just cheating yourself, as my mum would say. Um, But I'd have a day where I just felt the cravings were too much and I'd give in. And then I'd have a blowout and just eat everything in sight for about an hour and a half. Then I'd feel sick and then I'd stop and then I'd restart the next day. And gradually, 
You can do that maybe the odd time without any major effects. Well, I can because I don't have any huge health problems. Some people absolutely can't do that, can they? But um, So I was doing that and gradually the weight started to go up. Um, and I couldn't, I suppose I, I didn't really put my finger on why because to me, I was still eating carnivore. Uh, I was still eating mainly meat, fish, eggs and dairy. Um, but the dairy had gone way up and I'd added the seasonings but didn't really take much notice of those. Um, so I was in a situation where I um, was eating what I thought was fairly strict um, but I'd allowed a lot of things to creep back in. My weight actually, I actually gained about a stone um, during that time, very gradually. Um, it happened without me even really noticing. Um, yeah, so I was I was a bit, it got to, so it, it'll be two, it was two years in January. Um, and so for the early part of this year, I've been just continuing with that really until I came to you for some help, which um, has been just invaluable. Um, and I think you, you sort of said to me when we first spoke, you said, well, you've been doing this a long time, so, and you know what to do. So what, <laughs> what, almost why, why are you here for? And I said to you that just having someone that you then say the words out loud it, it sounds to me now saying it that I had added all these things and wondered why I was going, well, it sounds really stupid. But when you actually talk through it with someone, you get light bulbs going off. <clears throat> and that was what happened. Um, and I've been, gosh, I can't remember when our first meeting was. <clears throat> um, Good few weeks now. Yeah, I'll have a look. I think um, we're into our fourth session. So our first session was... Uh, 16th of July, 2024. Yeah. And so about six you, weeks ago. Yeah. And you told me all, all, all that, that story there, which was, which was very interesting. Um, so what changed? What did you realise you needed to do that's led you to lose that last five pounds you wanted to lose and everything? Well, it's been a, a sort of gradual process of knocking things off the list one by one. Um, I was tempted to go f get rid of everything all at once and go back to simple um, what I was doing at the start. But I haven't done that because um, I suppose I wanted to find what's the bare minimum I can do and get the results that I want. So um, the first light bulb was that why am I eating minced beef if I don't like it and the only way I can eat it is if I add dairy and ketchup to it and why am I adding hot sauce to something uh, pork belly is my most favorite thing ever why am I adding something to it that, make, that makes me want to eat more I need to just listen to my body which is what I was doing at the start so the first thing was that I swapped to eating steaks again uh, again not cheap not expensive steaks um, I have now the Denver steaks from Morrison's or Bavette or Flatiron or whatever they've got on offer, um, which I see it as like a poor man's fillet, to be honest, because it's it's not far off a fillet, but it's much cheaper. Mm. So I have my pork belly um, as one meal, just with salt now. And then I have my steak uh, as my second meal, just with salt and then fried in butter, might have an extra bit of butter on top. Um, and then sometimes I have some some prawns or um, a bit of salmon or something seafoody um, on top of that. And um, yeah, and that was that was that was good. Now, I didn't lose any weight, but what weight the weight loss is not really where I wanted to be. I just wanted to be I mean, it's so obviously what led to me coming to you was the weight gain. So that's, it sounds strange to me to say that weight loss isn't the, but isn't the goal, but it's, it is a side effect of, and being 
more um, simple. And I, I know that when I, I'm an abstainer, not a moderator. So I know that if I abstain from dairy, then I can actually um, abstain from sugar as well. So it doesn't lead me down a path. It's a bit of a gateway drug cream. So, um, yeah, so that day, that first time I met you, from that time on, I swapped to my steaks and butter rather than mince. And I swapped to, and I got rid of my hot sauce and my seasonings. Uh, I also ditched the cream from my coffee. So it was actually quite a sweeping. Uh, so I got rid of, you know, sauces, seasonings, and dairy all in one go. Um, and I didn't, I didn't lose any weight, but I felt, uh, more in control, um, and I felt good about it. So I was happy to continue that. I didn't feel the need to add that back in. And then I saw you again, I think it was a week or so later. And I said that, uh, I was doing really well, enjoying the States and whatnot. Uh, and I just happened to mention that, uh, I chew gum, sugar-free gum. And that I'd never given up that. So I, um, I also at seventeen, I had a bit. Of, I don't know what happened at seventeen, but I also started smoking when I was seventeen. I only smoked for about five or six years um, until I had my first child. But um, I started smoking and was very conscious of having cigarette breath. So I started to chew gum when I was a smoker, uh, and I. Uh, was an avid uh, extra bubble mint uh, user um, to the point where even on my wedding photos, as I smile on my wedding photos, you can see just up here in my gums, uh, I would have a piece of chewing gum. Uh, I didn't take it out even when I ate. So the gum would be stuck at the side. I just put it to one side and then I chew on the other side. So I was never without gum from after I cleaned my teeth in the morning until just before I went to bed, I had a piece of gum in my mouth. Not always chewing it, sometimes just it, it parked in, up in my gum. But um, And we talked about that and the potential that that might stimulate cravings um, and that, you know, there might be, we don't know e enough yet maybe about uh, that there might be some insulin response potentially, but also the action of chewing and how that is stressful and obviously the action of chewing tells your body that there's food coming and then there isn't so i made a decision and this was the hardest decision that i was going to uh, stop the sugar-free gum um i felt that it was a real it's a real crutch for me um but i did it and uh so i've Swapped to, um, I, I replaced the gum with flossing now. So um, I've got one of these little devices. It's like a, it's like a Y-shaped device that you thread the floss over. Uh, and I just do once a day, floss completely. And then I clean my teeth. Um, and I can't say that I've not had a piece of gum since, but I use gum now like a normal person uses gum, which is if I've eaten and then I'm going in to see someone, I go and visit people in their own homes. So if I'm going in to see someone and I know I'm going to be close to them, I just pop in a piece before I go in for a minute or two, um, which I think is, that's how normal people use gum, not, you know, an avid user like I was. Um, and that was um, really good. Again, I didn't lose any weight, but I felt it was another thing that I didn't need with all the artificial sweeteners and chemicals that I was using by taking that. Um, I I just got rid of those as well, made it even more simple. Um, and along with that, that made me more aware of artificial sweeteners in general. So um, I actually have stopped all the... Diet Sprite and Diet Coke that I was having, which wasn't much anyway. It was a, maybe a can or two at the weekends. But um, yeah, so that all went as well. Um, and it, as I say, I didn't lose any weight again, but 
Um, then we talked about what's next. And so coffee was next on the list. Caffeinated coffee. So um, now, and I, I know I've said this bef- to you before, Stephen, that even when I say this out loud, it sounds ridiculous, but I don't even really like coffee, but it's a habit. So I'm drinking something that I don't even really like as just because it's 10 o'clock in the morning or whatever. Um, so uh, I swapped my coffee to decaffeinated coffee because I thought rather than go the whole hog and just get rid of it, I'm just going to get rid of the caffeine side of it and see if that makes a difference. Uh, so I swapped to decaffeinated um, and actually lost five pounds in the space of two weeks. Um, and I have I still have my decaffeinated coffee that I don't really enjoy, but it's a habit. Um, so that's probably, I'm going to, I'm going to say that's my next plan is to just stitch the coffee, uh, and maybe find something to replace that. But, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really pleased and I'm not sure. I mean, it could be that it's the combination of the first thing, the seasonings and the sauces and the sugar-free gum and the caffeine. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But certainly it was the caffeine for me that was the trigger for the losing weight. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm really chuffed with it. Yeah, that's brilliant. I mean, that was what you said pretty much on our uh, fourth meeting. And you said there was somebody at work noticed something about you? Oh, someone said um, that I was aging backwards or something. She said um, it was someone who I hadn't seen um, for uh, quite a few years and I met up with her at a Pilates class and um, she said, uh, oh my God, she said, you look no different. She said, you, you're aging backwards. Um, yeah. And um, and actually people have commented over the last few weeks that I've lost weight, um, even though it's only five pounds um my sister-in-law said to me well you look like you've lost a bit of weight and i think it's um it's come off my face which is um probably why people notice it um i'm less puffy in my face but also around my belly um so even that it's only five pounds but i think have uh whether some of that uh visible weight around my belly wasn't actually uh, it was it was more sort of bloating or something I don't know, but people and people do have noticed um, even just a small amount of weight, which is just great. Yeah, and you, and you said one person actually said categorically, you know, have you lost weight around your tummy? You know, so yeah. I think I think when people say that, um, it doesn't matter about the numbers because if you're looking better, and I actually say this to people, the scale isn't a thing; it's how you look and feel. Because yeah. you could actually be saying to me. I, I don't understand, you know, my skirt fits better, you know, I haven't lost any weight, but people think I have because sometimes you gain a bit of muscle and you gain a bit of bone density. But, you know, I, I really want to thank you for the story because actually it is quite an amazing story because even going back to like when you were 17 and not having a natural bowel movement till age 44 is, I mean, that's, that's not great. Um, and the little bits, I'm glad you said it how you said it is, is that's how I like to coach. I don't think chucking everything out is the best thing because that's quite difficult. I think a little bit every time. And I've got I've got on my notes, get rid of the odd Diet Coke, you know, in one of mine. Oh, next thing is to get rid of the coffee completely. And, yeah. and you've done everything really simply, which yeah. is great, which is absolutely great. Um, so I want to thank you for that. You'll, you'll be surprised how many people will be interested because it is those last five pounds or belly fat that, that people worry about. I agree with you about weight. I think the health benefits, you know, natural bowel movements, not being so fatigued, um, not pretending that you're okay and then going back to bed for two hours, all those things are are big deals. And I I, I just think it's been brilliant, Emma, to work with you. I just, uh, I like talking to you and you're always really honest as well. And that helps. You're honest with yourself. That's uh, the biggest thing. I think I want people to take away is even if you don't book coaching, uh, but you're watching all the podcasts and you're listening, be honest with yourself about what you're doing 
and you will get further. Uh, I loved how you mentioned about the, you know, the cheat meals and things like that. That you are only cheating yourself. So I agree with your mum on that one. Um, yeah. So that was brilliant. I mean, if if you wanted to end with a final bit of uh, sort of summing up your experience of of going carnivore and and even with the coaching, which was very kind of you to mention, you know, what would you say to someone that's sitting on the fence about, you know, carnivore and n- not sure whether they should do it or not? I would say that everyone can should give it a try. Um, you don't have to commit to this being forever, but you don't know how good you can feel until you try it, until you get rid of all of the excess rubbish. Um, just a, a 30 day, 60 day challenge to yourself. Right, in this time, I'm just going to eat these things and see how I feel at the end, you know. Um, and I think that maybe 99.9% of people would feel much better 